Welcome to Fox Hills Black Report, your daily source for black news, views, and opinions. Today is Friday, August 5th, and I'm Mimi Brown. And I'm Romeo. I'm Demi Lobo. And on today's report, the Department of Justice will charge three current and former Louisville cops for falsifying documents for the no-knock raid that led to the death of Breonna Taylor. Meanwhile, Herschel Walker has less than a stellar appearance on a Fox News show. We'll show you how the Georgia governor hopeful flubbed a pre-recorded interview. Then, a Chuck E. Cheese actor is accused of dissing a black toddler. It's reminiscent of the flop over the Sesame Ple- over at Sesame Place. Uh, yeah, a lot of that going on in the world, and we're going to break it all down. Plus, Hollywood is rebooting. Everybody hates Chris, but this time it's going to be animated. We have more details on that later. And it's Friday, so that means we take a look at this week's headlines with the side eye with help from comedian Kareem Green. We have all of that and so much more. This is our voice and our truth, so let's get it. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. The Department of Justice, they are charging four current and former Louisville cops for their roles in the 2020 fatal shooting of Breonna Taylor. Now, Taylor was killed in a barrage of bullets during a no-knock warrant. Kyle Minnie, Joshua James, and Kelly Goodlett are charged with knowingly using false information to obtain a search warrant that authorized the search of Taylor's apartment. Specifically, we allege that Ms. Taylor's Fourth Amendment rights were violated when defendants Joshua Jaynes, Kyle Meany, and Kelly Goodlett sought a warrant to search Ms. Taylor's home knowing that the officers lacked probable cause for the search. Among other things, the affidavit falsely claimed that officers had verified that the target of the alleged drug trafficking operation had received packages at Ms. Taylor's address. The former officer, former detective Brett Hankerson, was charged with civil rights violations for allegedly using excessive force during the incident earlier this year. Hankerson was acquitted by a Kentucky jury of endangering Taylor's neighbors when the bullet he fired entered a nearby apartment. Um, I am so grateful for the Justice Department right about now. Um, I, I have to be honest, I never thought this day would come. I never thought this day would come. Just because of the justice system in America, um, I, I just didn't see uh, that this was going to happen. And so I am, I am truly, uh, today, grateful that the Department of Justice saw fit to, because they didn't even say anything either. Yeah. We, never, we didn't even know this was coming. This was kind of out the blue. So I'm really grateful that they saw fit to really be invested investigating this behind the scenes and then just kind of hit us out of nowhere with the fact that uh, they have been arrested and they are being charged. Mm, absolutely, Mimi. Because, you know, I thought that I had missed something. It, it happened so fast. I was like, whoa, what, where did this all come from? I remember yesterday uh, thinking about the sentence for Brittany Griner and all of this kind of coming in Lou at the same time. It just seemed, you know, one good thing happening for uh, Brianna Taylor and then a terrible situation happening for Brittany Griner. It just would be lovely to have seen two black women uh, not have to be going through something so uh, awful as this one, of course, lost her life in the uh, in, in transition. And so maybe just back to your point, it all happened so quick that mm-hmm. I kind of would have loved to be more in the know of, of that something has happened. Uh, it was happening, but also really good to know uh, the outcome was what we always wanted. So for mm-hmm. that, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm OK and I'm happy. Some type of justice for the family. You know, we saw what the WNBA, what the NBA, what everyone was doing, say her name. And we still say her name. We may not see it as much on social media. We still talk about this off camera all the time for yes we are surprised that these accus- that these situations came down that they're going to be convicted of this but I would say this I never saw this coming mm-hmm. I really thought there would be no justice mm-hmm. at all so it's very comforting to see that this is happening mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just to, to I mean uh, to be a fly on the wall when they realized that this was coming down because I think a, a, a lot of them a lot of the officers the four of the officers especially after you're acquitted for shooting through the neighbors mm-hmm. Uh, well, no, he was found guilty, right, of shooting through the neighbor's yeah, apartment, yeah. but not being found guilty of actually killing exactly. Breonna Taylor. So um, just that sort of, like, righteous uh, feeling that they probably had and to know now that they are going to have to face 
uh, federal charges for her mm -hmm. murder. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, really good. It's definitely good, good to see. Yeah. Uh, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is managing expectations about how many seats are likely to flip in the midterm elections after Trump backed candidates advanced on Tuesday. McConnell previously predicted the 2022 midterm would be very good for Republicans, citing Biden's low approval rating and the historical trend of the president's party losing seats in the middle of their first term in office. But the success of candidates backed by former President Trump, who have been echoed his uh, unfounded claims of widespread fraud in the 2020 election and the erratic performance of other Senate GOP hopefuls have put a damper on expectations of the Republican tidal wave in November. McConnell now saying that he believes the race is going to be very, very tight. The State Department is offering a reward of up to $10 million for information about Russian interference in the 2016 election. The reward is for about information regarding Yevgeny Prigozhin, uh, the head of the Internet Research Agency, a wealthy businessman whose ties to Putin, Prigozhin, and 12 other Russians were indicted as part of special counsel's Robert Mueller's investigation into whether Russia coordinated with the Trump campaign to sway the election. The Internet Research Agency is accused of using social media trolling to create discord in the United States to help Trump beat Hillary Clinton. And household debt for Americans is rising. It's at a $16 trillion deficit. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York says Americans are borrowing more to deal with the inflation and rising costs. The increase in debt went up 2% in the first and second quarters of 2022. Mortgage and credit card balances increased. Meanwhile, the New York Fed say student loan balances didn't fluctuate much this year. It stands around $1.5 trillion. Mm. And Herschel Walker's campaign for governor of Georgia continues to struggle. A pre-recorded interview on Fox News continued his pattern of confusing statements. Brian Kilmeade asked him about some of the controversial things that he said on the campaign trail and why he won't commit to debating Senator Raphael Warnock. Why would you commit to October 16th? Well, one of the first things you got to think about, a debate is for the people, not for any press or True. for any uh, uh, political party. He keeps talking about debates because he don't want to talk about his terrible record. Mm. Uh, the latest polls show that Raphael Warnock, uh, with the commanding lead over Walker, the survey U.S. poll shows that Warnock has a 48 to 39 percent advantage over the former NFL player, which, I mean, 48 to 39 is not that much of a lead. But I want to also correct something right there because the debate is is for the people, but it also uh, is for your promotion as well. A debate also lets you, lets a person that wants to potentially vote or not vote for you, it lets them know where you're at, where you're coming from, what you're thinking, what you will give the American people. So you absolutely. For, yes. So a debate is not just for, it's for the American people, for you in the end. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why he would say that, but also um, I do believe that I, I don't even want to see a debate between these two gentlemen because I feel like <laughs> Raphael Warnock is on such a high level. He is, you know, um, a reverend, and I feel like he is just comes with class and comes with grace. He's going to give facts. He's going to be well uh, spoken. That I don't even want him to stoop down to the level of whatever silliness Herschel Walker is going to. Well, us. I would disagree because I think mm -hmm. that they need to have a debate. I think that people need to get all of Herschel Walker. They need to make sure that um, they're seeing exactly what they're voting for. If, you know, if they're going to vote for him. Um, so. You're right in everything that you said about Senator Raphael Warnock, and I think that's what's going to stand, make him shine, and it's yeah. going to make uh, Herschel Walker uh, not shine, for lack of better mm -hmm. words. And so I think people actually need to see the two uh, side by side and see who can really cut to the heart of the issues of where the American people are, where the Georgian people Georgian people are, and mm -hmm. what they need. And, and I don't think that Herschel Walker can do that. I mean, how do you flub a pre-recorded interview? <laughs> well, I think that we've seen enough of Herschel Walker. I don't think that the two no, men need to... I, don't, I believe that we have. I believe that no. some of the crazy things we've said, he said about air and all the other outrageous statements that but we've see, made, I think we've seen you've enough. You've seen enough, yeah. Demi, but there are people perhaps who haven't been paying attention yeah. and that may need to see this to make their final decision. Like, this may be hearsay for them. People are talking about Herschel Walker. We don't people really... They, they need, need to see, see it. They may need to see what? it. 
I want to say that I think it would be quite entertaining. And look, I want to see how many times he's going to fumble the ball, so to speak, when it comes to him go ahead, going head to head against Warnock. I really feel like this will widen that gap for Senator Raphael Warnock. So I think this could be in his advantage. So must see TV for me. Mm. I agree. Much. I mean, and, and not that it would be entertaining because part of me knows <laughs> that it will, will be entertaining. <laughs> but, um, but because people need to see the difference between the two men. Mm. Um, he was picked by the Republicans because they wanted, I think, a black man to go up against another black man. Yeah. And uh, we need to show that there's a very big difference between mm -hmm. the two. And so that's what a debate will do. I stand Agreed. corrected. I stand corrected. All right. An assistant Cook County state's attorney is resigning after 25 years on the job. Jim Murphy is accusing state's attorney Kim Fox of being more concerned with politics than prosecuting violent crime. In his resignation letter, Murphy says he has zero confidence in Fox's leadership. Murphy also mentioned backlash the department got from the Justice Smollett hate crime case as a reason for his leaving. Kim Fox is one of the few African-American female chief prosecutors of a major city or county in the nation. A San Francisco man is being sentenced to 60 days in jail and two years supervised probation after threatening to shoot a family who were wearing Black Lives Matter t-shirts. San Mateo County prosecutors say Stephen Sabati was eating at a restaurant in Burlingame, California in June of 2020 when he spotted the family with the t-shirts. He proceeded to curse them out and say blue lives matter. Prosecutors say he told the family if he had a gun, he would shoot them. The family had just finish taking part in a George Floyd protest. Sabati pled no guilt, no contest to felony hate crimes. He was also sentenced to 120 hours of community service. Hmm. A white Mississippi man may face hate crimes after he shared a video online that shows him threatening to run down black kids on a street. Uh, Mark Hall was arrested last week and charged with nine counts of simple assault. He reportedly shared the video on Snapchat. A viewer recorded it and put it on Facebook. Hall can be seen on the video speeding up as he gets close to one of the children nearly hitting them. On the video, Hall can be heard saying, oh, hell, 50 points. And then he says, stupid N-word. Police say in addition to the hate crimes, Hall faces one count of attempted assault, but and as well as, excuse me, physical menace to create fear. Parents of two African-American students are suing a Texas school district, accusing them of ignoring bullying and abuse of the school's only two black kids. The lawsuit was filed against Clear Creek Independent School District. The parents alleged the North Point Elementary School run a, a blind eye to harassment and physical attacks on the children. Now, Shonda and Taituana Jackson was one of the children was punched in the eye and choked by another child. The Jacksons say they were never told about the attacks by school officials. The suit also says the children were not allowed to go to the restroom, which caused them to wet on themselves. Louisiana prosecutors are dropping charges against a black man who was severely beaten by state troopers before he was arrested in 2019. This is police cam video of the incident. A traffic violation and a resisting arrest uh, charges were dropped against Aaron Bowman. He was pulled over for improper lane change. The video shows trooper beating him. One of them used a flashlight. One of the troopers, Jacob Brown, faces federal charges of violating Brown's civil rights. Bowman was struck 18 times in 24 seconds with the flashlight. Hmm. New video has surfaced showing a Chuck E. Cheese mascot allegedly discriminating against an African-American toddler. The mother of the young girl wants answers after what she believes was a deliberate slight to her daughter based on her race. She took her two-year-old to the Chuck E. Cheese themed restaurant in New Jersey for another child's birthday party. While there, she says the actor dressed as the franchise mouse mascot ignored her black child but gave high fives to all of the white children. The mom videotaped the incident and posted it on her social media. This this uh, this after weeks of multiple videos of performers in character costumes at Sesame Place went viral for seemingly discriminating against black children in the park. The actors involved uh, in these accidents, they claimed they were unable to see the children because of the design of the costume. So to those designers, uh, let's get some new designs ASAP because we cannot continue to see this over and over again. And this one, so I'm not going to lie, I don't want to um, put the Sesame Place over Chuck E. Cheese or Disneyland or whoever, over whoever. But I will say this one was a deliberate, deliberately disrespectful. Um, and it seemed like she was the only black girl at this party, too. So much to unpack here. Again, I 
I know we don't have enough time. Literally, the Chuck E. Cheese goes high five, high five, high five, high five. It looks at the girl and then continues going. There was a white worker who saw the whole thing. You can see there in my eyes, I feel like she could kind of notice like, wow, that was kind of messed up. It was some parents uh, a little bit over yonder that also were looking at this little black girl be disrespected and no one does anything. And the manager at this Chuck E. Cheese is taking up for um, the customer. And I don't care how many the dollars, the mascot, I don't care how many dollars a, a you make an hour, nothing, no one is above, uh, you know, disrespecting children at, at, a, at a Chuck E. Cheese or wherever establishment you're yeah. at. And, and I'm happy we're putting them on notice. Yeah, you know, when these videos first, I'm glad these videos are coming out. Let mm -hmm. me just say that because a lot of times when things happen as a parent, you're like, did that just happen? You, 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 you know, you see it, but you wonder. And so now that more people are coming out, it's confirming the suspicions. I'm not crazy. That really happened to my child. Mm -hmm. And this is an ongoing problem. And so like you said, Demi, whatever they need to do, whether it's, you know, uh, fix the suits, the uh, suit buy new the suits, face. do something. They need to do something because these little innocent kids do not deserve. Uh, these, 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 this sort of treatment. They have no idea. And the pl that little girl was jumping up and down. So you cannot tell me that he missed mm -hmm. her. Well, he deliberately walked over, uh, you know, ignored yeah. her, and went to the other kids. How did you see all the other kids that were basically standing still and missed the one that's jumping up and down? I don't care what. Look, that mask is on that Chuck E. Cheese. Is it a rat? Whatever, whatever it is, right? That mask on that on that character can see. You have to walk around the whole building like that. So you have to be able to see. That's a poor excuse. Very lame. And I'm glad that we're taking notice. The problem is, how long has this really been going on? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Because someone That's put this on problem. Twitter and then there were more threads of people. Again, That's what happens. More more people at yeah. Chuck E. Cheese. Because you think, I'm telling you, as a parent, I'm as my in my own experience, if mm -hmm. something happens, you're like, did that just happen? Because yeah. you never want to just go out and immediately assume that someone is treating your child like that. But when you start to see other videos coming out, you're like this is a pattern this isn't this yeah. I didn't imagine this and so I'm glad that these videos are coming out and more parents are saying no this this I didn't imagine this this happened I, my child was being treated like this other children are being treated like this and these establishments establishments need to be held responsible 100% and when you hit them in their pockets mm. that's how they're going to be held responsible and there you go all right, well, the family of an Illinois 19-year-old are suing the Dalton Police Department after officers shot and killed her last year. The family of Alexis Wilson recently filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the Dalton Police Department. Dalton Police say they were called to a fast food restaurant for a report of a woman pointing a gun at a restaurant employees. Uh, but the family attorneys say Wilson was using a stick on the drive through window to get the attention of employees. When cops got there, they saw a car carrying Alexis Wilson in her drive through In the drive through they asked the young man in the car to get out. Now, the family attorney says within 50 seconds of the cops getting there, one of them starts punching Wilson in the face. That's when she drove off. Wilson was hit and died a short time later. The Cook County State's Attorney Officer says the case is still under investigation. So many cases like this over and over again that's under investigation. We have to do better. Uh, again, you know, how do we de-escalate this situation? It goes back to training and so much more, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Romeo, sorry we had to hit us again. We talked about a story just yesterday uh, where a black man said, he is sorry, but the first thing he thought about was to run from police. Yes. You know, and this is a great example of when you are in a situation with police, you are first going to think to run because you look at situations like this, who wants to die over something that could have literally, like you said, Romeo, been de-escalated in so many different ways. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Very good points, y'all.